Let's talk about the respiratory histology. So learning outcomes. Describe the structures that constitute the respiratory system. Describe the epithelial changes that occur throughout the respiratory tract. Explain the role of the main cells within the respiratory system. And identify respiratory structures and cells in histology slides. What is the respiratory system? A site where gas exchange occurs between the outside world and our blood. The system can be divided anatomically or functionally. Let's focus on the functional division. So functionally, the following structures in nasal cavities, sinuses, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, and bronchioles constitute the conducting portion. Whereas the respiratory portion is constituted by the respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and the alveoli. So let's meet the team, the conducting portion. First, ciliated columnar cells. Specialized form of columnar cell. Function to move mucus and trap particulates out of the respiratory tract and heavily ciliated and very abundant in our airway. Cilia, an organelle that can be found on specialized cells and functions to sweep out trap particulates to keep airways clean. Ciliated columnar cells. Found in the epithelium, end at terminal bronchioles, and our toll on morphology. This is our respiratory mucosa, our epithelium, the lamina propria, and the cilia. And these are our ciliated columnar cells. Additional cellular alert, basal cells. These are progenitor and stem cells that reside at the bottom of our epithelium and replenish cells above. They are short triangular and darker. These are our basal cells. Two, goblet cells. Fairly abundant in the airway. Secrete mucus, which is formed from mucin granules in the cytoplasm. And the mucus traps particulates and microbes. Goblet cells. Located in conducting airways. Found in the epithelium. And they're pale and cup-like in morphology. This is our epithelium, and this is our single goblet cell. Meet the team, the respiratory portion. Firstly, type 1 pneumocytes. 95% of the alveolar space is pneumocytes, line alveoli and involving gas exchange, and the organelles group centrally to save space. Type 1 pneumocytes. Found in the alveolar ducts and alveoli, extremely thin and slender morphology. These are our alveoli. As you can see, there are multiple alveoli. And these are our type 1 pneumocytes. Type 2 pneumocytes. They're less than 5% of the alveolar space. They function to secrete surfactant, which reduces alveolar surface tension. And they also act as progenitor cells for our type 1 cells. Type 2 pneumocytes. Found in the alveolar ducts and alveoli also, they are short and fat in morphology compared to type 1 pneumocytes. These are our type 2 pneumocytes. Additional cellular alert, alveolar macrophages. These are monocytes that have escaped from the pulmonary vasculature and function to phagocytose foreign matter in the alveoli. They're very large and dark, as you can see our singular alveolar macrophage. So the trachea. The trachea is a wide flexible tube that conducts air to the distal airways and is a classic example of the respiratory mucosa, composed of mucosa, submucosa and cartilage. The epithelium is a ciliated pseudostratified columna and with goblet cells. The cells look clustered and hairy like football fans and allows for functioning of the mucociliary escalator. The lamina propria supports the epithelium, mostly elastic fibers to allow elastic recoil and vasculature to warm up inhaled air. The submucosa contains serum mucus glands, and this aids secretions and trapping of particulates as well as moistening inhaled air. 
These are the seromucous glands. And cartilage, the trachea contains C-shaped hyaline and cartilage easily recognized by chondrocytes and lacunae to prevent collapse and maintain a patent lumen. These are the lacunae. Cartilage, the trachealis muscle completes the C-shaped cartilage. Let's talk about respiratory transitions. As we progress distally, there are histological changes. This is less cilia, decreased cell height, and less smooth muscle. Looking at the main bronchus, which is ciliated pseudostratified columna with goblet cells, as well as a lot of cartilage. Moving to bronchioles, there is ciliated, simple low columna and no cartilage, but moving to alveolar ducts and alveoli, there is non-ciliated, simple cuboidal or squamous, as well as no cartilage. Let's examine the alveoli. This is the basic unit of respiration and the site of gas exchange by the blood-air barrier. This is a capillary, and this is the capillary endothelium. This is the airspace. And this is an alveolus. There are multiple alveoli, which constitute an asinus. The epithelium is simple squamous, single thin layer with spindle-shaped cells, and allows for short diffusion distance. The lamina propria, it's generally lacking in connective tissue, but in mostly elastic fibers to allow for elastic recoil and prevent alveolar collapse. A summary. The respiratory system is adapted to serve three main functions, warm, moisten and clean any inhaled air. Warming is done via the lamina propria, moistening is done via the serum mucus glands and goblet cells, and cleaning via the cilia. The major respiratory structures include the nasal cavities and sinuses, the pharynx and larynx, the trachea, the bronchi and bronchioles, and this is part of the conducting airways. The major respiratory structures also include the respiratory bronchioles, the alveolar ducts, the alveoli, and is part of the respiratory airways. The key players in the respiratory epithelium of the conducting airways include the goblet cells and the ciliated columnar cells, and the key players in the respiratory epithelium of the respiratory airways include the type 1 pneumocytes and the type 2 pneumocytes.